Hello, uh, this is a very brief lecture on Chapter 3 of the Fundamentals of Financial Management by Brigham and Houston. Uh, this chapter focuses on financial statements, cash flow, and uh, taxes. So, uh, we're going to look at the key financial statements. Uh, there are four of those. Uh, we'll talk about uh, how those are reported, uh, and then we will also talk about cash flow uh, and the values that are created in the company, specifically uh, economic value added and market value added, as well as the federal tax system. So, uh, financial statements, there are four key financial statements that we find published in the annual report of the business. Uh, the annual report uh, comes out approximately three months after the operating year in which it's reporting on, uh, and it includes both this financial information as well as other managerial analysis. Uh, examples of the financial reports, we see the balance sheet. The balance sheet uh, focuses on the assets, liabilities, and equity accounts of the business, otherwise referred to as the permanent accounts. Uh, it is for uh, the account balances the day of the report, which is usually the last operating day, uh, which uh, for a lot of businesses is December 31st of that year. Uh, the next two reports are the income statement and the statement of cash flows. Both of these are activity reports, meaning that it is uh, reporting on the activity for the entire year. Uh, the income statement focuses on uh, the revenues uh, and expenses, uh, otherwise known as the temporary accounts, uh, meaning that they're zeroed out at the end of each year, uh, and looking at uh, revenue generated or earned, and then the expenses matched to those, which is following the accrual accounting uh, methodology. Statement of cash flows focuses on exactly that, the cash flow. Uh, so instead of focusing on revenues and expenses, it's trying to identify how cash actually moves through the company uh, and how it is generated in the three different categories of operating cash flows, investing cash flows, and financing cash flows. The uh, most common method of reporting this is uh, the statement of cash flows is what's referred to as the indirect measure of uh, or the indirect method of cash flows. Uh, and this actually uh, creates greater value than the direct uh, method uh, because the indirect method, uh, as it applies to the statement of cash flows, becomes a reconciliation uh, between the income statement and the balance sheet. Uh, the last report, the statement of stockholders' equity, uh, this is reflecting those changes to the equity section of the balance sheet. And so it is a bridge between the income statement and the balance sheet. So uh, we look at uh, earnings, uh, hopefully positive earnings generated. Uh, also, uh, anything paid out in dividends and any other changes we may see in the uh, equity section. So when evaluating the financial health, uh, there are a variety of ways to do that. Uh, one is uh, these following measures. Uh, the uh, net working capital. Net working capital is looking at current assets minus current liabilities. Uh, now, uh, from your uh, prior uh, courses, you'll know that a current asset or a current liability is current because it, it plans to be either used or paid within the next year, 12-month uh, period. Uh, net operating working capital uh, is a subset of that because we're only looking at operating current assets minus operating current liabilities. Uh, what if which, if we look at the next bullet point, it gives us some greater definition. Uh, so uh, the non-operating uh, current assets, uh, the ending cash balance, or what's referred to as excess cash, um, would be excluded because it is not being used in other ways uh, to uh, generate revenue. It's just cash sitting in a, uh, an account somewhere. And then for current liabilities, uh, notes payable, uh, is excluded because notes payable are structured short-term loans uh, versus the more spontaneous liabilities of accounts payable, taxes payable, wages payable, things along those. Another method of uh, calculating uh, the cash uh, flow through an organization is what's referred to as free cash flow. Uh, in free cash flow, uh, we start with an income statement uh, concept, earnings before interest and taxes, multiply that by one minus the tax rate. Uh, then we add back depreciation and amortization, which is um, uh, one of the steps similar to the statement of cash flows. 
Uh, but then we see here we subtract our uh, capital expenditures, which is the acquisition of new fixed assets. Uh, and then we subtract the change in uh, net operating working capital. So not just the net operating working capital balance from the current year, but the change from the prior year to the current year. One of the things that we should be aware of is that financial statements are not sufficient uh, in themselves to evaluate managers' performance, uh, but they are necessary. Uh, but one of the reasons why they're not sufficient is because it doesn't reflect market values. So we need to add some additional uh, me measures to make sure that the company uh, is uh, performing at the level an investor would want. Uh, and so we see here there are two measures, uh, the market value added and the economic value added. Uh, market value added is just looking at the difference between uh, the equity market capitalization minus the book value. Uh, economic value added is looking at a dollar amount uh, be, that was generated by the business beyond any kind of required return. So uh, in the case of economic value added, if our total invested capital was a million dollars and the cost of that capital or required return was 10%, well, 10% of a million dollars would be $100,000. So uh, EBIT uh, without taxes uh, is it greater than that? And so that helps us identify uh, some value for the firm. Uh, one thing that we want to be aware of, uh, going back to uh, net uh, working capital, uh, is those current assets and current liabilities, uh, which form trade credit, uh, specifically accounts receivable. Uh, accounts receivable is where we uh, tell a customer, we trust you to pay us, and so we'll give you 30 days to pay, usually. Uh, accounts payable is when our suppliers trust us to pay uh, later instead of immediately. So uh, one way in which this can be used strategically, uh, we see here uh, what would happen if a company were to offer their customers 60 days to pay instead of 30 days. Uh, well, if all of their customers did the same thing, match the terms, uh, what we would see is accounts receivable increase because on average, uh, they now have 60 days to pay versus 30. So our cash balance would go down, which would be potentially problematic if there is an economic downturn. If competitors do not match, meaning that they're not uh, looking at our actions and mimicking us, uh, then uh, if our sales were to double as well, uh, we would see inventory and fixed assets increase to uh, reflect that increase in sales. We would see accounts receivables go up and cash would go down in the short run. However, in the long run, if we could maintain that 60 days uh, to pay for our customers, none of our competitors did that, we would actually see uh, more cash come in because of that sales increase. So let's talk about uh, taxes uh, within the federal tax code. There are rules related to individuals as well as corporations. Uh, in 2018, uh, the tax uh, system changed for corporations uh, because now companies pay a flat 21% on their income. Uh, previously, uh, there was a pro progressive structure which was anywhere between 15 to 35% depending on how much you made. Uh, taxes, uh, some taxes have corporate income tax uh, that has to be paid, some do not. Uh, in the case of individuals, uh, their uh, rates, uh, individual rates, uh, prior to 2018 uh, were the uh, 10 to 39.6%. The 2018 tax bill lowered that top bracket to 37%. Uh, and then as of uh, 2018, uh, we see the uh, dollar amounts there. Of course, those uh, change each year. And so 2020, we'll see higher values. Now, uh, as it pertains to tax treatment, to some of the things that we see, uh, on our financial reports. Uh, interest paid. Uh, interest paid, uh, which we see on our income ex uh, income statement, so interest expense. Uh, this is uh, expense before taxable income. And so uh, this provides a tax shield of sorts uh, for companies. We also see this for individuals. Uh, interest earned, uh, usually fully taxable. However, 
uh, if a company or individual uh, had interest from uh, what we would call municipal bonds or muni bonds, uh, those would be tax exempt. Uh, but then we also have dividends paid. Dividends are paid to shareholders. Interest is paid to bondholders. Uh, dividends paid is after uh, taxes have been assessed. And so uh, it would be a, uh, a distribution of net income uh, through cash. Uh, and so we would see tax, that's a after tax activity. So with uh, dividends, uh, most investors pay 15%. Uh, however, uh, that can go up to 20%. And then for very high wealth people, there's an additional 3.8% tax. So the very wealthiest uh, would see a 23.8% tax on this, while uh, most other investors would see uh, 15% and of course uh, some would see zero. Uh, this is what we would call uh, double taxation uh, because uh, the corporation is taxed on its earnings and then once it distributes those earnings to its shareholders, the shareholders are taxed uh, on their income. Uh, one additional things that we want to uh, talk about uh, which is not uh, significantly involved in this class is uh, the tax loss carry back and carry forward as well as capital gains. Uh, this does affect uh, the, because there are uh, different rules that apply to this, uh, then uh, we can see tax breaks uh, applied. And so especially in the case of a tax loss, uh, if a company took a loss in one year, they could apply that loss to the next year if they had a profit. And so. Uh, this allows them to pay no tax uh, in a profitable year because of a tax loss in a prior year. And then sometimes uh, the carry back would allow you to amend a prior year's return uh, and actually get a refund from that. And so that is chapter three of uh, fundamentals of financial management.